the, another few words in the introduction and Monday we'll start uh, the Tanya. So the Alter Rebbe says the following, that the Sefer Tanya is melukat mipisforim umipisoifrim kadoisha elyen nishmasan edin. He's telling us that he took those information from Maimonides, from the Maharal of Prague, from the Shneluches Habris, the Shalo. His name was Rabbi Yoshaya Horowitz, and from the Baal Shem Tov, and from the Magid of Mezrich, which the Magid of Mezrich was the Rebbe of the Alter Rebbe. And he continues to say, Meyusad al Pasuk, it's based. The whole Tanya, first part for sure, which first part of Tanya has 53 chapters. So it's Meyusad, it's based al Pasuk on a verse from the Torah, in Chumash Devarim, Deuteronomy, in Parashat Nitzavim. Moshe Rabbeinu is talking to the Jews, he's about to, after the 40 years, a few, I guess a few days or a month before he's going to pass away, he's telling the Jews the following. Ki ha mitzvah, this is not from the Tanya, I'm just going to explain you the passage that the Alter Rebbe just said. Ki kavav elecha, it's close to you. This is Moshe Rabbeinu talking to the Jews, but this is what the Tanya brings right here. Ki kavav elecha, it's very close to you. Adover ma'oid, it's very close. In other words, Moshe Rabbeinu is telling the Bnei Yisrael that the mitzvah, all the mitzvahs that Hashem gave the, Jew, the Jewish people, you don't have to go to heaven to do it. They're not far away from you. They're now across the sea. Ki adover ma'oid, All the mitzvahs are very close to every single Jew. When I said that, when Moshe said very close, mean kind of easy to not easy, but they're close to do. All the mitzvahs that beficha, that have, have to do with the mouth, davening, for example, the brachas, eating on Shabbos, and even during the week, but all the mitzvahs that have to do with the mouth, ubil vavcha, here we have the word lev, heart, so those are all the mitzvahs that have to do with the heart. I'll give you a few examples. Believing Hashem, Emuna in Hashem, Achdus Hashem, the unity of Hashem, the love for Hashem, the fear for Hashem. All those mitzvahs are mitzvahs, a part of the 613 mitzvahs, but they are located in the heart, right? That's where they happen, those mitzvahs. Tfilin, Moshe, when we put on Tfilin, we're doing an action, right? But those are the mitzvahs that are not in the mouth, that are not in the action, but they are happening in the heart. The Rebbe Rayaz, the previous Rebbe said that a man, when he really has fear and love for Hashem, he looks different. He has a different face. You could see on his face that he has fear of Hashem and love for Hashem. So not only it's a mitzvah in the heart, but that heart has an effect on the actual physical body of a man. And then La Soisa, that's all the mitzvahs that have to do with Asiya, La Soisa, doing things. All the mitzvahs, the do mitzvahs, right? So Moshe Rabbeinu Stalin Gebnei Yisrael, all the Jews, Everything it's easy, kind of. So the Rebbe is asking, after Rebbe is saying, how can you say that it's easy? Some of those mitzvahs are impossible. How can you order someone to love Hashem? You cannot order anybody to love. If you love, you love. If you don't love, you don't. So that's one question. We say every day, we say, It's an order. Hashem is telling you, you should love Hashem. Nobody can be told to love anything. If you do love it, you love it. This is something that happens inside the heart of a person. Same thing with the fear. Same thing with the unity of Hashem. To believe that Hashem is the unity. When we say Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad, we bring in the unity of Hashem. This is happening in the head, in the brain, and the heart of a person. 
and of course the the fichta, the, the mitzvah that have to do with the mouth, all the brachas and all the learning of Torah. You know, when we learn Torah, we should say the word. It's very clear in the Torah that if a person doesn't say the words of the Torah, he doesn't have to scream. But he must say the word with his mouth. That makes an action. But mostly, you know, there are mitzvahs that have to do with the heart and have, some have to do with the head and some have to do with the action. So the Alter Rebbe is saying that how is it possible to do that? Moshe Rabbeinu is not lying to the Jews. He's telling something true to the Bnei Israel. You could do it, no problem. So the Rebbe is asking, how is it possible? So that's what he says. To explain well, how is it so close for us to be able to do such a thing? Maimonides says that the same way you cannot put fire and water in the same cup, you cannot have the love and the fear of Hashem together with the love of the world. It's not possible. But we live in the world. We human beings. So what is Moshe Rabbeinu trying to tell us? And the Tanya will explain through the first chapter on to the 17th and then till the end, the two ways how to do it that we're going to talk right here. So he says, I'm continuing in the words. Leviathan to explain well, Echu Karav Moid. How is it so close? Bederech Arucha Uksara. I will explain in a long way and a short way. I'm going to tell you a little story. This is a story with Rabbi Yeshua ben Chanino. He was the Rebbe of Rabbi Akiva. And it's a story that relates the sharpness and the, wis the, the wisdom of the children of Yerushalayim. It's known, I guess today also, I don't know about that, but that the children in Yerushalayim were very, very sharp and very, very smart. And so there's many different stories in the Gemara, but one of the stories with Rabbi Yeshua ben Chanina. He was going to Yerushalayim, he was traveling, and then just he was about to get closer to the city, he came to a place where there were a fork, two different ways to go, and he wasn't sure the way to go. And there were children playing, Jewish kids from Yerushalayim playing around. So he went to one of the child and he asked him, what's the way to Yerushalayim? So the child told Rabbi Yeshua, there's two ways. There's a long and short way. And there's a short and long way. He showed him both ways. Which one you think Rabbi Yeshua took? I'm asking anybody, which one you think of Yeshua to, which way? Which, let's say, which way will we take? When we hear that there's a short and long way, I believe we'll go for the short and long way. That's human nature, let's say. And that's what Yeshua did. He took the short and long way. Thing is that he was getting very close to the city, to Yerushalayim, that came to place that there was a lot of obstacles, trees, and there was no way to go further. So he had to come all the way back. He went back to the child and he said, you, you, can you lie to me? You know, you told me that was a short and long way. But you know what the child told him? I told you that the other way was the long and short. So actually he took the other way. And at the end, he was able to get there. So this is something that here the Alter Rebbe is telling us, that he's going to explain us in a short and long way. What is the short way? The short way will be, I think, about till chapter 17. The short way will be, I'm sorry, the long way will be from chapter 1 to 17. The work that the Alter Rebbe is going to explain us how to develop ourselves, the love and the fear of Hashem through meditation, through, through the work that we are able to do with our faculty of thinking, and developing through the thoughts and the meditation. I'm not talking about um, um, meditation. We're talking about very simple meditation, which actually can happen even when you drive a car. He's going to develop for us so much concept of what we could think to develop our fear and our love for Hashem. But that's a long way because that takes time, that takes work. Nothing comes for free. Only, only the Klippa give stuff for free. In Kedusha, in holiness, you got to work hard to get even a little something. The Torah says, a man rather have one kav, one portion that he worked for, than nine portion that his friend gave him. 
So we, that's the long way. It's a long way, but we're gonna talk about it in a moment. It's a very, very effective way for many reasons. And the short way, it's the fact, and I think we all know that already, but he's gonna explain that every single Jew, doesn't matter where he comes from, has a hava amesuteris. He has a hidden love for Hashem and a hidden fear for Hashem by nature. This is a gene kind of thing. Every single Jew, because of his neshama and because of his ascents, Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, gave over to all the children of Israel the possibility, the, they have this hidden love and this fear for Hashem already naturally. So why is it a short way? It's because when, you, when you're using something that you already have, it's like, you know, it's like, a, it's like a awakening something that you already have. And that works also very, very much. And Dr. Rebbe is going, but that's more like a short way. But really, we need both. We need both ways. I'll tell you two, two little examples why we need both. This is an example that the Baal Shem Tov told. Let's say, God forbid, you have a thief that wants to come into your house to get something. So there's, you know, every time he comes, you know, you scare him. <clears throat> once you call the police, the problem with that is that, right, he's going to run away, but he's always going to try to come back. You haven't taken care of the core of the problem. The other way to do, I mean, it's, you know, it's really a, a little example, but the other way to do is to go behind him and catch him and sit down with him on the table and talk to him and see what's going on and, and change him. Then you change the core of the problem. Another example would be a person that has, God forbid, a blood issue. The blood is giving up to his skin different kind of uh, blood, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, he's, well, there's a problem with the blood of a person and on his skin appears some kind of bloody, you know, I don't know, I'm sorry, I don't know how to say exactly what it is, but you understand. So what, what the guy, let's say he goes to a doctor and the doctor says, okay, I'm going to put a, a bandage on here. I'm going to put a bandage on there. But the problem is that he doesn't take care of the problem of the blood itself. So, okay, it's going to take you for, for a while, but again, there's a problem, there's a core issue. So that's why we need both. We need the long way and we need the short way. And I will, I will explain a bit later that we only have a few minutes, but it finishes to say that Be'ezros Hashem is both. That's the last three lines. Sorry. One. At the end of the introduction, he says Be'ezer Hashem is both with the help of Hashem, because we need the help of Hashem for all this. Hashem wants us to, to be the best we can. Hashem created the world because Hashem wanted to make a dwelling place in this on earth. And he, he doesn't need us, but he wanted people on earth to do their job. And he gave us every single thing, every tool to do it. That's why Moshe Rabbeinu told the Bnei Yisrael, it's close to you. Adav Mod, very close to you, to do everything. But obviously, you need to put the work to it. And we're not talking about moving mountains. We're not talking about, you know, nothing like that. It could be a little something. When we touch the core of something and we're able to change the core, everything changes already. Even if we touch a little point. So we're not talking about, you know, going, you know, transforming ourselves. That's not, a, eventually, you know, hopefully we'll, we'll become better, even a little bit better, that's enough every day, right? A good job is everyone.